there, there are three things. Um, I guess I just wanted to share them on the topic of challenging convention before I do actually get out of the way and, and our, get our real uh, performers uh, up here. And the first thing is around the idea of convention and rules and so on and where that comes from. The second thing is where we actually get the source for our best work. Because all of us in the room tonight are trying to make an impact in some way in the work that we're doing. And maybe it's worth exploring where that comes from. And then the third piece is trying to understand why is it that we sometimes are, call it prisoners to convention, or that we don't challenge convention enough, or we find ourselves wishing but not doing. So the first piece is, actually it's a thing that I get a lot from, from people who've, let's say, met me in the last year or two, and they're literally shocked when they hear that I spent most of my life in an engineering or technical environment because, I don't know, do they think I was in the priest or something? They think I'm some kind of, um, I don't know what it is. They go, really? How were you in that? So um, one of the things that I've observed over many years of being in engineering or um, physics or microelectronics as I, as I was and then coupling with, with the business world is that, or at least from my perspective, when it comes to rules, there are actually not that many rules, but most of it is convention. So as I see it, there are two kind of laws of physics when it comes to business. And the first one is like gravity. And gravity is undeniable. You know, it's, it's there all the time. And in business, the gravity is the need to be profitable. So that any venture that you're doing, it needs to be profitable, it needs to be sustainable. Profit is the fuel to, to run any engine. I know we have not-for-profits, but they still need to be covering all the bills. You just can't get away from that. It's gravity. It's just pulling at you all the time. The second thing, then, is a little bit like electrical current. It needs to flow, and that's more of a, um, I guess it's more of an abstract concept of value. And you need to have value transferring from one person to another or one entity to another, whether it's a direct, let's say, business customer relationship or one to one thing or within organizations, but you need to have value. So that's the kind of the second, I would say, that's absolute. So as long as you have those two things, stuff happens, okay? And those are almost physical laws. But all of the other stuff that we adhere to are essentially rules that some other guy made up. Or one time this worked, and then we said, will we do more of that, lads? Sounds good. And then the next thing, everyone's doing it. And often we just do it because that's the way it's being done. So that's one thing I would definitely um, look for tonight as we're going through the various uh, talks and interviews and so on, is just to think about what falls into the category of physical laws, or things that you can't change, and then the stuff that we just make up. The second thing I want to talk about is where our best work comes from. And this is, uh, I know is also a topic that falls into this, this idea of challenging convention. So the first, uh, let's say it's the starting place for a lot of, I guess it's conversations around work or business, uh, will come from a, a place of logic. And it will be some kind of a, a brain-related function, whether it's a very much a prefrontal cortex kind of thing, there will be some uh, version of this phrase, what do the numbers look like? Or how does that shape up? What's that plan like? Okay. So again, no matter what we're doing, if we're in large organizations, if we're doing our own thing, if we're looking to scale globally, all these crazy things, you'll be starting from a, from a brain position. Okay. That's not the only way to do it. Another way of doing it is starting from the gut. So tuning in to what your intestinal system is telling you and is giving you some kind of input or sensation that, ooh, that feels right, or run. Most of it is run, by the way. Um, now, that's another way of doing it, but it's not the only way. The third way of thinking about it is, 
What about things that come from the heart? So what amount of work do we do that comes from an emotional place or comes as, and this is a weird enough phrase, as an act of love? How many times do you do that out of love for something, people, a community, that you want to see better in some way, okay? So that's a third way of doing it. But maybe that's not the only way either. And here's another way. What about work that comes from the soul? It comes from the soul. And I can't even point to that on my anatomy because I don't know where that comes from. But maybe work that comes from an area of trying to find meaning in something as a, a way to excite or inspire other people or to form connections in a, a different way. Maybe sometimes we can start what we do from that position. The third piece of this challenging convention idea is around, is answering the question, why is it that whether we want to or don't want to, but spend so much of our time in conventional mode? Why aren't we unconventional in that sense, whether it's right or wrong? And a lot of it comes down to the concept, as Stephen Pressfield wonderfully coined it, and I think he's done it better than anyone else that I've read or met, is the idea of the resistance. The resistance. So this concept that between us and anything we're trying to do, whether it's start a business or whether it's try something new, whether it's go for a promotion, go for a new job, change your career, try something completely new, there's this weird thing called the resistance which is preventing us from doing it. And sometimes it's hard for us to actually explain why we're not doing something, only that it just doesn't feel right. And all of this kind of boils down to one single word um, which comes in different forms, and that word is fear. We're afraid that something will work out, something that uh, won't work out. We're afraid of criticism, we're afraid of, we're afraid of ridicule. There's a hundred different forms of fear. But I think what's most relevant for us in this room tonight, as we prepare to listen to uh, these fine people share the stage, is that when it comes to feeding the resistance, the thing that works the best is to avoid taking it on. So if you want to m continue being afraid of something, if you want to continue to feed the resistance in moving from A to B, the best way of doing that is to avoid it, because avoidance amplifies it. Annoyingly, the way to, to mute it is to befriend it. And to befriend it is to accept that it's there and to every day say, I hear you, I see you, I feel you, but today I'm going to do the work, whatever that work is. And I know I'm uh, almost using Steve Pressfield's language because, as I say, I think he's um, expressed it better than anyone else. The bottom line when it comes to avoiding the avoidance, if I can say that, is that you need to put Proverbially, you need to put your bum in the chair. You need to take the action, whatever that is. And yes, of course, it's easier said than done. Of course it is, and that's the bloody point. That's the point. So, as we're going through the next couple of hours, just to think about why is it that we resist challenging convention? Just to, as, as we're listening to the various stories that you're gonna hear, um, where is your best work coming from? Do you tend to, to work from the gut, from the brain, from the heart? What about the soul? And when it comes to things that are driving you, or holding you back, or inspiring you, how much of those are physical laws, the law of gravity, or the, the electrical current of value, versus things that some guy, probably a man in a suit, probably wearing a tie at some point, decided that was the way to do it, and that's what we're doing, okay? Thoughts to be considered. Now, that was the end of my uh, Val Dunican.